I have three outdoor cats, so having this pump is pretty handy. Please just come over here and drink this. But my new house it doesn't come with any uh, any outdoor spigots. There's no attachment for a for a garden hose or anything. So that's one other thing that I'll have to eventually eventually consider. So let me show you guys all the work that I did last night on my barn. And these doors have turned out nicely. It's quite a bit of work. And uh, quite a bit of lumber too. This door has turned out pretty well. I like it. Um, it's a lot better than what was here before. Be what was here before were these, these doors, two doors that swung out like this. And it was always hitting the ground and it was uneven. And those blew off when uh, the hurricane came through. So I have this one up now. And I can open it up like this. So now this way the door stops right about there. And it opens up this, this much here so you can walk through. Or you can open it up all the way open like that so you can you know put the trailer in and out. I was worried I was going to have to move this rock because the door, you know, hits it. But all you have to do is simply just pull it out and move it like that. And here's the two big doors on the barn. It catches a little bit on some of that tin up there. But these are really big doors, very heavy. It takes two people to, to lift it up. And this ramp is here so that it doesn't, it stops there. Um, so I wasn't really sure how, what I was going to put on these doors, but I do have some plywood that, uh, that I'm going to put on. At first I thought I was going to, you know, get some long pieces of wood, um, and put it on. But yeah, I, I thought of something else. So, so far this project hasn't cost me a lot of money. I had to buy two 12 foot rails and some of these support uh, a bunch of brackets. I'm actually going to be able to return three of them to the store. The brackets are $8 each and the two rails were about $50 each. So it added up to over $200. And on this one here, I was re able to reuse the old hardware that came down from that that was ripped down from the hurricane. So I was able to reuse all these pieces and the brackets and I had the lag bolts already. And I just so happened to have a pair of these, a pair of these rollers. So that saved me 40 bucks too. I just had them in a, in a bucket of miscellaneous parts. And this here is the plywood I'm going to use. Um, we have this plywood uh, for, for our laser business, laser uh, cutting business that my wife operates. So this is really, really thin stuff. Uh, but I think I'm going to put this on the doors. Now, the reason why we're not going to continue to use this, it was kind of water damaged from the hurricane. So it's not really... First of all, she doesn't really like this kind of wood. She bought it and it didn't really cut very well. So it's kind of been sitting around. And so she said, yeah, I'm not going to use that stuff. So there's enough pieces here for me to use on the doors. And I think it's, you know, it's very thin. But I think after I stain it and if I have, you know, proper flashing on the ridges here so water doesn't like drip down on the surface, I think it will be okay. See, I'm going to have to gonna have to put some flashing up here you know it goes up like this just so the water can drip down like this just so the water can drip down like this instead of onto the actual doors so this project has taken quite a bit of time more than I I would have liked it's like I'll you know I have my cabin to to work on still and all that sort of stuff but I really want these doors up here before the before the snow hits because if you don't have a door on the snow is just gonna go right into the barn and on the back section 
I have all this plywood here and I'm saving this this plywood came from the shed that was over there and it got blown down from the hurricane so I was able to retrieve a lot of wood so I'm thinking of putting this up on the back here just right up here I'm gonna put it all cover that in with that plywood it's just on the back it doesn't have to look I don't really care about the looks too much so I just have to take those pieces of wood off these pieces here were from were up there and I was able to retrieve them in the in all the in all the debris so I'm going to put those back up and then I can put the plywood on cut it and then I'll have a nice little nice little shed in here and as for this trailer I'm probably going to fix it up and sell it I've actually I've already ordered some new tires for it these ones are well they're not bad but they're a bit weathered and I will stain all the wood and paint the metal and the lights work and I, oh yeah it's still registered for Ontario so I would have to get it uh, registered here and then I'm just going to sell it and then this this space I can either park the truck in here or a tractor you know it'll be really nice all right guys the sun is setting and I'm done for the day the doors look pretty nice so this one though I don't really like the aesthetics of it I should have just taken this door off and lay it flat on the ground and then I would have been able to put these pieces on more straight um, but what I'm going to do is get some trim pieces um, and uh, and cover it up and make it look really nice so I'm going to get some trim all the way around the borders and then two going down in the middle there and I'll paint those white and the rest of this I'm going to get some stain um, I have some dark walnut at the cabin and I'm going to stain all this all this wood and same with those ones over there uh, but the functionality of it is is really good so this is just some basic hardware that I put on here I can't really do it with one hand so that's all it is pretty basic stuff so I like this door because you can pull it out this way and then you can have a little opening over there or you can just go ahead and open up the whole thing so I really like how this one turned out it's uh, it was pretty easy to just stack them on top of each other so it's 12 feet tall six feet wide each door and uh, in order to open it you have to go through here because I have it all locked down it's really dark see you in a second well the light the lighting in here is really bad um, but this is the kind of hardware I used and then there's just a hook on the inside but see the, the the trick is you can't have that hook sticking out too far or else it will hit the side of the barn so it has to be really flush to the to the to the door and right here is just a, a little turnbuckle to hook on to the other door and you can tighten it right up so that when the next windstorm comes around it's not going to go anywhere the doors will bang like that but I figured if there is another hurricane expected another big windstorm I can just you know stuff wood in between this ramp and the door so that they don't they won't go anywhere at all they'll just stay put because I do not want to have to do this ever again it's a like I said it's a lot of work so anyways that's that job I have to have a lot of stuff to clean up put the tools away and then I'm not done so I still have to paint and uh, get the trim pieces on but it will all be worth it okay so I enclosed the back of the my lean-to here my lean-to garage shed there we go so I'm glad I I'm really glad I saved all that plywood from that shed that blew down because I was considering putting that into a burn pit but it really came in handy now I have a nice little enclosed space. 
putting up all my hung up all the chains on this wall. It's a very old barn, but an old barn is better than no barn at all. And I'm sure it's going to stick around for quite a long time. Just have to make sure the water doesn't get to it. This whole section was uh, ripped out when we bought it, when we bought the property. And I think they had some water damage here and they tried to repair it. So they had to take down all this stuff and yeah, anyways. And there are these great big beams here that are just lying on the floor. On the inside, I am storing a lot of lumber in here. I would like to clear out all this hay and then have a better space for storage, but that will be another day. I also want to take this moment to thank all of you for leaving uh, your comments on my last video. Really appreciate all the kind words. And it was really nice to, to see everybody commenting. You know, I, I haven't uh, I haven't posted in a long time. I, I, have, I post sporadically um, and I'm not very consistent, but I'm sure a lot of you are kind of interested in, in my lifestyle. So you, you follow along from time to time. And it's always fun to, you know, reflect back on when I started this, this channel and making the videos. I was had a uh, e-waste drop-off bin in behind a grocery store in town, and I was collecting junk all the time and taking it all apart and reselling it. I would have never in a million years thought I'd move all the way up to Nova Scotia at that point in time. So life's a real adventure. You just never know where what's going to happen. This is a wood box that was on the front of the trailer. I gave that some fresh paint. I didn't do too much to this. I just uh, took it off and stripped off some old paint and then put new paint on. Just letting that dry for now. But again, I love the red paint. And this is the mist tint that I bought. It's black, grayish, and it's been sitting for a while. So I made a little stir stick and we're going to stir that up and there we have it it's the end of the day and i'm done with this trailer i think it looks really really sharp so i mounted all the tires new tires on it i added this little hook for the chains so they don't so when they're in storage they don't they don't drag on the ground uh, but this whole thing has been painted with a couple coats of metal paint. Nothing uh, professional, but it looks nice, and that's what counts. These tires here, like I bought four tires, and they were on sale for 140 each. So after taxes and everything, I think it came up to like six, six sixty or something like that. Uh, all I did back here with the lighting is I, this cover this cover was broken, so I replaced it. I had a, a spare set in my shed. I stained the tailgate as well. But yeah, this stain, I really like the color. It was a mist tint that I bought. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. But it's kind of like a, like a barn board kind of look. And I think it looks great. And so all I have to do now, I test all the lighting, all the lighting works well. I just put a new uh, grounding cable on and I just tucked in all the wiring. I put, uh, I put these, uh, I screwed the wiring to the, the, to the rail so that it's not flying everywhere. All right, so I just have to take off the jack. And all I have left to do with this is get it registered for Nova Scotia. It's still registered for Ontario. I haven't been using it very much out here. And yeah, so just got to take off a jack and put it back into the shed. Unhook it and I'll get my truck back. And after I get it registered, I'm going to put it at the side of the road. With the for sale sign on it. Not sure what price point. I'm thinking around thirty. I think I'll put out for thirty-eight, thirty-eight hundred, and see what happens. And I'll post it as well. But it's a nice trailer. Now that I've cleaned it up, it's really nice. Uh, but it's just a bit big for me. I'm 
more of a single axle trailer kind of guy. And uh, so this is just a bit big for me, but it works really nice.